video from the team here at BlenderTech.com. If you enjoyed it or learned something from the video, consider liking it and to subscribe to the channel for more Blender, Unity 3D, programming, Photoshop, and all sorts of other videos. We try to add at least one quality video a day. And lastly, don't forget our motto, create your way. So today I want to be looking at and how to use NURBS to model organic flat shapes you would call them uh, hard surface organic shapes I guess but you wouldn't be sculpting it it's completely uh, math and polygonal based I'll explain a little more in a section so NURBS I'll uh, just ignore my to-do list I'm using my smaller whiteboard now as a to-do list and my bigger one for uh, for all my ideas storyboarding stuff like that but anyways um so yeah NURBS stands for non-uniform rational basic spline so it's a mathematical model using computer graphics that generates and represents curves and surfaces so basically what it that means is it's uh it takes points and it allows you to create a surface based on a mathematical expression just like most things in uh 3d programs including blender but now the s why that's important is because of the word splines in non-uniform rational basis spline. So spline. So what that means is you have a spline, which will be something like that that you connect together. So you have four points connected together, which will give you a nice round curve. And NURBS, they allow you to take that spline, turn it into a curve, and then it generates a 3D surface off of that. And then you have even more control to that. So you have more control in the sense that um, we have some good pictures on Wikipedia here that you have um, you have control points and control polygons. So when you've once you've created your uh, your curve, your NURBS curve, and it's cr generated its um, its surface mesh out of it, you have what are called control points, which are essentially kind of like vertices, vertexes that you can pull on to adjust the the surface and you also have control polygons so that would be certain polygons that you could adjust to change the surface so it's uh it's just a faster way to box model things in certain situations it's great for cars and other things that are curved but still have fairly flat shapes and um if i bring up another image you can see kind of how the splines work. You have the splines set out and then it generates this curve. And if we uh, go to this animation here, you can see how it uses control points and uh, control points and control polygons to generate this uh, this geometry, this mesh based off of uh, all these this all these splines and this control geometry control points so let's go into blender and let's get started so I might be a little bit slower than usual because I've got my uh, desk set up for using my brand new uh, graphics tablet and so right now I'm gonna be using a mouse just for speed sake but I've got my graphics tablet set up usually where my mouse would be so things might be a little bit different than usual just turn on screencast keys for you guys so yeah NURBS are very easy to create I don't see them being used a lot they used to be used more maybe they've been replaced by bezier curves but basically you just go add Add curve and you want a NURBS curve so as you can see it's already generated this basic uh, curve for us let me go to front view right view front view top view top view okay so it's rotated really let me rotate it along the X yeah there we go perfect 90 degrees and that's exactly what we want now let's go into edit mode so you can see how this works we've got um, our control points so that's this one right here 
right here, right here, and right here. And so this is your spline, and these are your control points that allow you to adjust the shape of the curve. And just like anything else, you could go and you can subdivide it, and then you can adjust shape. You can also um, switch direction, just like, um, well, just like any other path or just like armatures and stuff. And you can also do a few other uh, things like smooth, smooth out a curve. If you had, a, if I subdivide this a bunch of times and then move these all over the place so that they're really wacky and then go and select them again and then go W and smooth. It's going to try to smooth it out into as smooth a curve as possible based on what you've given it. But anyways, let's get rid of this one. So let's create a new one just like we did before. Add mesh, NURBS curve, rotate along the X 90 degrees so that from the front we can see it. And let's try recreating a car fender or something to that degree. So let's go under the curves um, panel and we need a bevel object. Now curbs or NURBS curves are extremely simple in the fact that you can simply add a mesh plane and just leave it like that. It can be any size. You can even move it to another layer. I'll move it to layer two. I can take this curve and under the curve settings tab here, I can choose the bevel object. Shoot. So to see how these work in action, we need to create something for uh, our path to have as a bevel object. So let's see how this works uh, compared to Bezier curves, which you may be more familiar with. So I'm going to add in both a Bezier circle and I'm also going to add in a NURBS circle, both the same size, but let's see the difference. So I have my path here. Let's uh, choose our bevel object. Let's start with the Bezier circle. You see we get this uh, this weird looking shape here. It uh, It's almost pipe-like, but it's, uh, it's definitely it's definitely different. If you had used a Bezier curve, it this would be uh, this would be a pipe. It would take the the Bezier circle and it would it would basically extrude it out just like a pipe. So you may be familiar with that. And if we choose the NURBS circle, it gives us the exact same thing. So this can be used in different ways, however. Let's delete our Bezier circle and let's delete our NURB circle. If we go and add a NURB circle and use the NURB's curve as the bevel object, you'll now see that we get this really interesting shape. And now if we go and we edit our NURB's path, so let's just grab an edge you can see how we can we can adjust the geometry and so we can make this little bull shape for example this would be a perfect headlight bezel just like that um, so it takes a little bit of getting used to before you finally figure out how everything works but uh, it can create like I said very good vehicle shapes very good organic flat shapes you can see this could be maybe like some sort of alien ship um, body like as a vehicle if you mirrored this along the uh, z-axis like if I threw on a mirror modifier along the z okay it's not gonna show up no I guess I would have to convert it into a mesh but yeah you get the idea <laughs> So yeah, that can that can allow you to create some really interesting shapes, like I said, that are especially useful for for uh, vehicle geometry. So, anyways, that is if you add the NURBS curve 
or the nerves. Yeah, that's if you have the nerves curve to the nerve circle as a bevel object. You'll see our nerves curve has no bevel object. We can change it to nerve circle and then go back to our nerve circle and get rid of the bevel object and we go back to that original shape. Now, if we edit our nerves curve, we'll go into edit mode. You'll see that we get, if we go completely straight, again, just it works like a Bezier curve and if I extrude and extrude and extrude and extrude yeah it works exactly like a pipe so basically this works the exact same way as a as a Bezier curve so where NURBS come into power let's go back to our stock NURBS shape is when we edit our NURBS circle. So right now our NURBS curve, our bevel object is NURBS circle. So let's take our NURBS circle and let's edit it. Let's turn it into something that's not quite a square. We could even turn the resolution down all the way to one. That's not even enough. Let's turn it back up to 12. Let's go into edit OER in edit mode though and let's subdivide this. And let's grab the edges out. You can see the immediate results this has. So if you get an, a shape that you like with your uh, with your circle, it'll it'll work out in your uh, with your curve. So this would be the beginning of some sort of I don't know. It could be a really weirdly shaped fuel tank for a motorcycle or something. And then if you converted it to a mesh and deleted the bottom part, that would make a really nice fender shape. But uh, yeah, let's let's try to get a little more useful shape out of our circle. Let's see what we can get here. Just delete that side. So here I just have a straight line now, although it's not perfectly straight. I would definitely need to play with it a little bit. But here you're starting to see the power of it. If you create what's essentially a straight line, let me see if I can line this up a little bit better. Uh, yeah, vertex snapping. Oh, the normals are all messed up. Uh, I'd have to rotate it. So if you rotate it and get a nice straight shape like that, that's where some real magic starts to happen. We could even just take a simple point and duplicate it. And let's delete these ones. And just extrude this straight across. That'll give us along the Y. That'll give us a nice straight line with perfect normals. That's what I was looking for. Okay, cool. So there you go. We have a basic... I don't know, like I said, a basic fender shape. So now you can you can adjust it a little more. So let's subdivide this and then let's take this point and let's grab it along the Y to the very edge. Actually let's let's subdivide let's sub subdivide it one more time, all the points. And then let's take these ones and grab along the Y zero point 
0.25 units in each direction. Maybe it'll help if I turn off the normals. I always find that helps. Grab along the y negative 0.25. So now we could uh, we could change the shape of our of our fender is what we want this to be. So let's maybe extrude that up a little bit. Leave that where it is. Let's extrude this up a little bit. And maybe let's extrude this up slightly more. Line this one up with the original side. So you can see we kind of have this uh, basic, um, like I said, a basic fender shape. And you can continue working on this. You can continue extruding new new parts to it and seeing how it seeing how it affects the shape. Um, you do have to be careful though because you can get some really weird artifacts and possibly that's why it's not in use as often as Bezier curves are. So there you go. We've created what I believe to be a nice fender very, very quickly. We could even take these and grab along the X. Give it a little more depth. Yeah, so there we go. A nice basic fender. And then we could subdivide this uh, one more time and we could we could just make we could uh, continue to add more um, add more resolution to the curve depending if you maybe you wanted the top completely flat you, you could flatten it out like that depending on what kind of vehicle you're modeling or what kind of model you're modeling and depending on your resolution you can get very hard surfaces or you can get very smooth and I'll it also depends if you add smooth smooth shading once you uh, turn it into a uh, turn it into a, a mesh. But now if we go back, oh, now we have two noobs nerve circle. Why is that? This one's a path or cur Oh, sorry, I, I read curve as circle. <laughs> but now if we go and we edit our c original curve, let me turn off the normals on this one too. We can take that shape and we can edit it to our needs also. So we maybe want our fender, let's let's just delete that point completely. Maybe we want our fender to extrude along the X like that. What kind of shape is interesting that I could make? And then maybe it goes Along the X a little more, and then along the Z a little bit. And then along the X. So I don't know, but this is a very interesting shape in my opinion. And you can, of course, extrude in any direction and create very, very interesting shapes. But yeah, basically, you know what this would be useful for as a bumper is if I went and duplicated this on each side. If I deleted these two points, then took all of these and shift D to duplicate, right click, and then scale on the X negative one. Ooh, is that what I wanted? Scale along the Y negative one? No. Scale along the X negative one. That should have been what I wanted. Well, let's just rotate it along the Z 180 degrees. Then scale along the X negative one. Then rotate along the Z 180. Okay. No, rotate along. Hulk, I'm just playing tricks on me. We'll rotate along the Z, essentially.
Okay, well, I don't know why this is playing games with me, but you get the basic idea. Um, if you were to duplicate this, I could do it very quickly. Basic idea. Uh, extrude along the Z to there. And then grab along the X to some degree. And extrude along the X. You could make some sort of uh, bumper shape out of this. And then you could go and refine it later as a full mesh. So yeah, nerves, nerves have their use, I would say, mostly in vehicle modeling. And I wanted to show how it works. And of course, at any time, you could go back and you can edit your base, your base uh, circle. Um, I would give it another name because it's no longer a circle. But yeah, you can edit it at any time to adjust the shape, obviously. And you can get all sorts of crazy things. Um, so you can see now we have a little, a little more refined shape. A little bit of artifacts because I didn't do this perfectly. I just kind of uh, guessed, but uh, you can see now it's got a little, a little bit of a different shape. So yeah, I think that with the proper use and a little bit of uh, time, NURBS can save you an, a, a huge amount of time in creating meshes. Because now all we have to do is take our, we can, we can move this to a different layer anytime. We can take this and just go uh, and convert it to a mesh curve convert it to a mesh from curve and now we have a mesh that we can completely edit so you can see all the geometry there now there's a ton of geometry obviously you would want to add a uh, a decimate modifier and i would probably use uh, i'd probably collapse it at a certain ratio That's obviously not working. That's obviously not working. That's obviously not working. Ah, there we go. Okay, yeah. I was doing an edit mode. Wasn't thinking straight. So yeah, I would either use angle limit, but usually collapse works better in my opinion. So yeah, collapse it to a reasonable amount depending on the shape of it, obviously. You could also play with uh, unsubdividing. That can also work depending on the shape and the curve resolution. Yeah, so we've turned however many, I don't know, 50, 70,000, whatever faces into a thousand by simplifying it that much. And that at any time we could also uh, shade it smooth. I guess it was. So yeah, just like that, basically. So that's a great way to create, like I said, body panels, uh, vehicle parts. Because so if I went and added a, uh, a real quick chrome material to this. Just added some random area light, or sorry, a point light. I'll just make it a sun. Then went into rendered mode. Uh, hard to tell, but it should be. Let's see. Let's go to our materials again. Want it all glossy, basically. There. So yeah, there you go. Perfect chrome bumper in hardly any time at all. Now, obviously, I don't have the lighting or the scene to make it really, really show off, but uh, you get the idea. So yeah, that'd be the perfect way to uh, create a bumper. All you have to do is uh, go into edit mode and turn off limit selection visible. 
just grab some faces. Whoops, and face select mode might help. Brush select some faces. Maybe I'll grab some more. Again, you would take your time with this. I'm going for speed. But then you could extrude them in. And you could probably add, do that again here for the signal light. Extrude them in, and then you could uh, you could cut off half and do a mirror modifier. Just do it on the other side, and when you go back into object mode. Whoa, that really messed it up with our modifier. Let's turn it off, and there you go, instant bumper. And like I said, it works. You can create body panels just as easily with it. All you have to do is um, create a NURB circle, edit it. We'll just delete everything except for one side. We sh should just to be. Sh it looks like the normals are messed up, so I'm just gonna delete everything. I'm just gonna extrude this along the Y. Be any size really. Subdivide it a few times in case I need to add extra detail. The more subdivisions you make, though, the more uh, vertices you're gonna, or the more polys and vertices you're gonna have once you add a path. But then I'm just gonna add a new NURBS path curve, I guess you could call it. Choose the circle 001, and we have a very basic body panel. Now the normals are messed up. We would have to play with our curve a little bit. Like I said, I knew the normals would be messed up a little bit. Could delete those subdivisions maybe. So yeah, you'll have to play with it, obviously, but it can create very quick, very fast, and easy body panels. And anything else that has that kind of organic, hard surface nature to it, you know, like uh, a mech model, um, any sort of construction equipment. Like I said, this is a very vehicle-based. You'll see a lot of tutorials on YouTube where people make um, uh, make uh, motorcycle fairings out of this and other motorcycle parts since since they seem to benefit from this and like I said I've used them before to make bumpers that's why I, I, I know how to make the shape like this very quickly they're great for bumpers they're great for hoods they're great for fenders they're great for headlight bezels you can back in the day we would use NURB paths for modeling an entire car now using uh, subsurf uh, methods with box modeling has kind of come down to it's a personal preference but NURBs do come in useful and do beat box modeling with subsurf in instances like I said, such as a bumper that would take me a lot longer than it took me to create this tutorial uh, to model this bumper using box modeling and subdivision surfaces than it did to use it to create it using NURBS and like I said you're not going to get the same effect uh, making a or using a bezier curve so if I had a bezier curve and add a bezier circle and try to do the same thing go into edit mode and delete everything except for the one line if I go back to my bezier curve and choose my bezier circle you can see it's not going to do anything at all Bezier, Bezier curves need to be used with something that is joined on all sides. So I would go like that. Oh, this is going to be all messed up. I try to. F yeah. Oh, 
Whoa, what's going on there? Rotate 90 degrees. You get the idea. It's used more for making pipes and stuff. Whereas NURBS are used more for making surfaces. So yeah, I, that's just something I wanted to uh, bring up for those of you that are uh, doing vehicle modeling. If you haven't used NURBS paths before, uh, play around with them. They are very useful for making vehicles and they can be also very useful for making other interesting shapes. So we can go one last time and edit our NURBS path. And you can just see that the I'm just gonna totally just grab it random here. Oh, I'm not using the right one. It's on a different layer, right? Let's uh, let's bring it back. Where is my layers view? Right there. I thought we were using this one. Let's. Just, oh right, I converted it to a mesh already. So let's add in a new uh, NURBS curve and. And bevel object is nerve circle zero zero one. No, nerve circle right. So yeah, you could see how you can get some real real interesting shapes that could be used for some sort of mechanical object, and we could just keep on editing it and keep on playing with it, and you can see how you can get really uh really hard edged bevels, and yeah, it's in my opinion it's fun to play with. You can get some very, very, very interesting shapes. And like I said, once you get used to uh, to using the handles and getting the normals down right, you can you can um you can use it to model an entire vehicle, uh, like I said, any sort of other thing like a a, a mech, um, if you wanted to model a transformer maybe. So yeah, you can see there while that needs to come down, grab one Z, X, Y, Y, until it's completely flat, something like that. So there, I don't know exactly what object that would be for, but it's definitely very cool. And uh, if you were to mirror this four times, that would be some sort of neat shape. Maybe uh, maybe a head to a mech or something. So yeah, just wanted to uh, show you a little bit of what NURBS can do. And uh, post some pictures of things you make using NURBS. And uh, I also need some questions for my podcasts. I uploaded a podcast today. That's uh, soundcloud.com slash blender tech uh if you're bored when you're modeling just give it a play and listen um if i get enough questions and answers and uh input um i will upgrade to a pro soundcloud account so that i can upload as many podcasts as i want i really enjoy doing it and um i talked all about blender tech stuff i talked about blender news i talked about cg in general and uh i talked about just some general things that caught my eye on blender artists and blend swap and uh blender nation and things like that so yeah give me some questions so that i can answer anything that has to do with cg it doesn't have to be blender related give me some blender tech questions anything post them on youtube twitter facebook whatever we're on twitter at twitter.com slash blender underscore tech so that's at blender underscore tech or facebook at facebook.com slash blender tech page that's blender t-e-k page all one word and yeah that's basically all there is to it so
Thanks for watching from the team here at BlenderTech.com. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, please like it and don't forget to subscribe for more Blender, Unity 3D, and programming videos. We're now on Twitter at Twitter.com slash BlenderTech. That's at Blender underscore tech. And Facebook at Facebook.com slash BlenderTech page, all one word. We now offer hard copies of our videos, so if you'd like a copy to download on your computer to watch later, just let us know and we'll upload it to our server for you to watch later in the media player of your choice if you dislike this video for some reason don't just leave instead leave a comment or email the team at info at blendertech.com about what you did not or did even like we also take requests for tutorials let us know what you want or want more of so the more community input we have positive or negative the more we'll be able to improve our videos and create for you uh, I know I checked my email and I got a request for a cloth tutorial from uh, Aladdin purses or something along that line I will be doing a cloth simulation tutorial as soon as possible for him and for you guys so anyways see you next Next time, remember, create your way.